Today is Donald Trump's first full day as the 45th president of the United States. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord Thank you. That's the voluntary global accord signed in 2015 by nearly 200 nations to cut greenhouse gases to slow the warming of our planet. This morning, German Chancellor Angela Merkel called it extremely regrettable. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called it disheartening. And the Vatican went further, saying Mr. Trump's decision was a disaster for everyone. Hurricane Irma. Hurricane Harvey. Hurricane Maria just came ashore in Puerto Rico. Winds are ferocious right now, gusting above 120 miles per hour. Thursday marks the end of hurricane season, and 2017 was by far the costliest on record. You have warmer air, it can hold more moisture. We have more extreme rain events, and we're seeing that. The Trump administration proposed new rules to roll back the miles per gallon or fuel efficiency standards on new cars and trucks sold in America. Today, the Trump administration formally announced their plan to roll back President Obama's clean power plan. The clean power plan was designed to cut power plant fossil fuel emissions by a third. In the past administration made a commitment to declare a war on coal, and effectively yesterday and today, uh, that war is over. NASA said today that 2017 was the second hottest year on record since modern measurements began in 1880. Cape Town, South Africa could become the world's first major city to run out of water. The city has launched an aggressive campaign to avoid day zero mandatory limits, 13 gallons per person per day. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released the unprecedented report, concluding that the planet can't keep up with global warming. The consequences for nature and humanity are sweeping and severe. The congressionally mandated national climate assessment was released on Friday. The report details the extreme dangers of climate change and the toll that human activity has played in speeding up the process. I've seen it, uh, I've read some of it, and it's fine. Did they say economic impact is devastating? Yeah, I don't believe it. You don't believe it? No, no, I don't believe it. We have 12 years to radically transform every part of our economy and society to stop the climate crisis. I just want to let you all know how proud I am of each and every single one of you. 2018 was the fourth hottest year since scientists began keeping records in 1880. The solution is not going to come from just one congresswoman from the Bronx. It's not going to come just from one senator. It's going to come from all of our representatives as a country. Democratic Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Senator Ed Markey introduced their Green New Deal at a press conference today. The Green New Deal, getting a lot of pushback from Republicans. Radical environmental socialism. You're not allowed to own cows anymore. It sounds more like of a, a green nightmare to me. After a year of devastating floods, wildfires, and hurricanes, climate change has been polling as a top issue in the 2020 Democratic primaries. It is a monumental crisis. People are being harmed by it. Countries are at risk of vanishing. It is our moment to solve America's most daunting challenge. We will build a clean energy economy. We have to stop the thinking that clean energy and job creation don't go together. They do! If we don't have the guts to take on the fossil fuel industry and tell them that their short-term profits are not more important than the future of this planet. And I got to tell you, according to the scientists, the world that we're going to be leaving our kids and our grandchildren is going to be increasingly unhealthy and uninhabitable. Now to the crisis in the Amazon, where fires are raging at a record rate. This morning, one of the world's most important natural treasures in flames. Over 9,500 fires have broken out since last week. These trees are crucial, not just for how much carbon dioxide they absorb, but also for the role they play in cooling the planet. We're seeing, I think, the first flickerings of the tipping point. That will transform large sections of the jungle into a savanna. I will tell you that we are a generation of scared people but very ambitious, very united, very persistent, and very good at action.
Organizers of today's global climate strike are still tallying the number of people who took to the streets around the country and the world. Estimates are well into the millions. Now, the goal of this strike and really all these strikes around the world is to send a clear message to world leaders ahead of the UN Climate Summit happening this week in New York. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? New findings show the world experienced another year of extreme weather in 2019. The last decade was the warmest on record. People don't really understand it until you actually see it coming at you in a wall of flame. 200 fires in all, burning in Australia's two most heavily populated states, that's New South Wales and Victoria. The coronavirus is spreading so quickly around the globe, it may only be a matter of time before it begins rolling across the U.S. The number of cases in the U.S. jumped again overnight. The fight against the virus has slowed down many economies at huge cost, but it's also done wonders for the air and for the carbon emissions that are heating up the planet. But scientists are warning that this extreme reduction, as they call it, in greenhouse gas emissions is likely to be temporary. We can either rebuild as it was, which is a huge mistake, or we can rebuild a more inclusive and the more sustainable economy and society. That is why we've been recommending to have massive investments in green technologies, in green industries, in green energy. Blood orange skies and overwhelming smoke from wildfires had sadly become part of life for people here on the West Coast. People in the Bay Area woke up to look at that orange and red skies, the smoke blocking the sun, some saying it feels apocalyptic. It's a lot of disbelief that it's happening again four years in a row now. Donald Trump visited California to offer support and he offered some climate change denial as well. It'll start getting cooler. I you wish just, you just watch. I wish science agreed with you. <laughs> hey, well, I don't think science knows, actually. We know the answer, mm -hmm. and the answer is to move away from fossil fuels and start leaning on sustainable energy. AT&T, Amazon, Microsoft, Unilever, Apple will be 100% carbon neutral. So our ambition is to become a net zero company by 2050. Its president it promised China would be carbon neutral by 2060. Over your four years, you have pulled the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Accord. You have rolled back a number of Obama environmental records. What do you believe about the science of climate change, and what will you do in the next four years to confront it?